Cinema 2.0 is more than just AMD, and it's more than, than effects companies, and it's more than game companies. I want to introduce you now to another pioneer. His name is Mr. Jules Erbach. He owns a company called Jules World, and Jules World is really what's behind the software on Cinema 2.0. He works with such directors as David Fincher. Uh, so I would ask you to please welcome Mr. Jules Erbach. Well, it is a, a true honor to be here uh, and to be part of the Cinema 2.0 event. Uh, just to give you a brief history uh, of our work with AMD, it started last year. Uh, we were working on Transformers, the movie, uh, and we even did tests with Sony Imageworks for Spider-Man 3, taking those movie assets that take 40 hours to render and rendering them nearly identically in real time. And, uh, and AMD, of course, was really interested in, in that work, and they uh, sort of took us under their wing and, and helped us push this even further. So Cinema 2.0 really is, in a lot of ways, the end result of that going into 2008. And uh, the first uh, fruits of that labor really were the uh, Ruby commercial, which we'll play for you again. So you can see uh, some of the very first tentative steps we made in the Cinema 2.0 world. Let's play that clip. So let's now take a look at what works and what doesn't quite work in that scene. I mean, Cinema 2.0 is obviously something that is a continuous effort. If you take out the robot and the character and you just play back that city scene, when we first showed this to people as our you know, very first effort at, at creating a Cinema 2.0 environment, a lot of people thought we went out and actually filmed this. And of course, as you've seen, it's CG. We can render this in real time. And I think that at, that, at this point, we can say, okay, we have environments that look real. We have sets that look just like in New York City Street. We can, we've gone that far, but what, what about the characters? Well, Ruby, her body looked pretty good, but I think that it's undeniable that her head looked like a video game character. And that's because we actually did take that video game character asset that AMD had created and put it in this scene. And even when you throw a lot of money at this problem, making a character that looks completely photorealistically real is very difficult to do. The human brain understands what a face is supposed to look like, uh, skin is a very difficult uh, surface to model. Uh, light enters and scatters and hits blood and bone and tissue. It's just, it's very difficult to capture that. And really, our work in Cinema 2.0 wouldn't be complete if we were not able to account for that. So I think when it came time to deciding what's the next step, we wanted to really conquer characters. We wanted to make characters that would be completely real and fit into these real environments. And really what that requires is just a big leap of technology that no traditional... Uh, art pipelines, I think, can account for. So where we turned to was a piece of amazing technology. And I'm just going to show you uh, one image that represents what this technology can do. Let's show that slide. So I don't know if you can tell the difference between a photograph of Thomas Hayden Church and a CG Thomas Hayden Church that's been scanned in and rendered as a CG model using the light stage. The light stage is... Uh, a piece of scanning technology that was created by Paul Dubovic and Tim Hawkins at USC, at their graphics lab. Uh, Paul is very well known for creating the, uh, the paper that actually led to bullet time in the Matrix movies. And this is, uh, really, this is an amazing piece of technology. I mean, I can't tell the difference. It's, this is in a coffee table book, The Art of Spider-Man 3. Sony used it for a few shots, because really it's an experimental technology that's, up until this point, has been in the laboratory. And we're very pleased to announce today that we're forming a company called LightStage that will take this technology and the team that built it and bring this into the practical world of films and video games. So let's take a look a little bit at how LightStage works and how we get to this amazing result. Uh, let's show the next uh, clip. If you look at this model, the very first thing you'll notice is that she's got hair, that, you know, strands of hair popping out, her, her teeth, everything is there. And in the traditional way of, let's say, doing something like uh, Davy Jones and... Pirates of the Caribbean that ILM had to spend months and months of work on, you know, or even having my own artist that worked on the Ruby commercial, uh, this is a totally different way of, of doing a character. I mean, this, this is like taking a photograph, except you're doing it holographically. All those rainbow colors you see are just the surface points on her skin. 
Um, but that means that if I just put a person in the light stage, it's a domed capture environment, it's a volumetric capture device, uh, anything that goes in there, whether it's a plant or a person, just gets scanned in, like that, like taking a Polaroid snapshot of something and, and, and having that asset instantly. And because it's so fast, let's play one more second, just one more second of this clip, and then pause again. If you saw that, you can see her, her muscles are moving. Everything that's, that's, that's being done in her face, all of that work, you know, we don't necessarily now have to go and rig her facial muscles and try to figure out how all that works. That's captured in full motion on the light stage. And that's really revolutionary. And it's also a lot cheaper and a lot faster than anything else that we've ever had as, as, as artists or as video game developers or as filmmakers. And this changes everything. It's beyond exciting to be able to say, we're going to take this and make this thing real. Uh, you know, Andy's been working on this now for almost a year to really help us take things like this and make this practical and possible in the real world of video games and films. So what you're about to see next is the rendering of this data set. And it's not a video. It's not a photo. It's an actual rendered image, CG rendered. Uh, but the light stage captures so much data that you, you may have trouble believing that. So let's just play this clip and, and take a look. There you go. That looks pretty real to me. And that's the quality of light stage characters. And this, mind you, was several years ago. This, these are very old tests. The stuff that we're doing now is going to boost this up to, to eye resolution, meaning that you won't even be able to see the dots that make up this character's face. Uh, you know, every pore and every piece of stubble on a person's chin and all of that gets captured. Uh, what's exciting, though, isn't obvi the obvious impact this has for films. I mean, if you compare this to, for example, Beowulf, Beowulf, that technique used just 100 points on somebody's face. I mean, the, the human face, you're going to take a picture, is going to give you millions of pixels. That's what we're, that's what we're capturing in, in, with the light stage. We can render that in real time. I mean, part of our collaboration with AMD has been to tackle that problem. The light stage generates a huge amount of data. It doesn't fit into the traditional rendering pipeline. But just as we had to tackle these same problems of getting Spider-Man and Transformers to render in real time and match that cinematic quality, we're doing the same thing with the light stage. Let's show that clip of the uh, real-time light stage renders. So what you're seeing here is basically the mouse is changing the lighting on this head in real time. And this is not a photo. I mean, this, this is just a highly detailed CG model. As it moves, the lighting can change. And when you think about a filmmaker who doesn't have to worry about this, the lighting on his set anymore, they could just scan in a character on light stage and then just do all the lighting afterwards. Even the camera work can be done afterwards. That's remarkable. That's remarkable from the perspective of, of linear content, and it's remarkable also for video games. Uh, clearly, there's no reason, given that we have this technology now, that every single video game character can't look as good as this. This can be rendered on the 4,800 cards that are in these machines. Uh, you can move the camera around. The lighting still looks perfect. It's, it's really... Frankly, it's amazing, and that's one of the reasons why I, I, I leapt into this, uh, you know, into this technology, and it's worthy of its own company, and it's, it's just exciting to flesh out that pipeline and make this thing really work. So let's take a look at the, um, and sort of the next step for light stage. So you're seeing, you've been seeing these heads that look really great. Can we do a full body? The answer is yes. Uh, you've seen a bigger light stage. So this next clip, uh, we'll be showing you light stage six, which is about 30 feet tall.